blessings to everybody out there listening today. Today, we're talking about the other side of the promise. Everybody have a promise. Everybody's holding on to a promise. What does it take to get that promise? We'll get into that. Here we go. First of all, let's pray. Your Majesty, I thank you for this moment, this opportunity, and this day to be able to come before your people all over the world, to be able to release and to remind them of the the promise that you have given them and not to lose heart or lose faith or be oppressed or depressed or even have doubt when it comes to your promises, God. But let them cling to your promises regardless of what they see, regardless of what's around them, regardless of what happens in their lives. Knowing that you are the one who never changes, your word stands still, your word lasts forever. And if you've given us a promise according to your word, surely it'll come to pass. So thank you for encouraging them today and allowing uh, my ears to be able to hear directly from you and to be able to release oh, everything that it is that you have for me to release to your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's get into it. After I close this door back. Give me a second. All right. Let's get into it. Now, God gave the children of Israel a promise, right? But in order to get to the promise, they had to face the giants. Remember when he was sending them to the promised land? But it was something already over there in the promised land that they were supposed to go to. It was giants. Giants that they've they've heard of, but never seen before. Mm. (laughs) Just like the promise that God gave you. Man, God, yeah, I've been prophesied this over and over again. I heard of it, but man, I don't have enough to do this. I don't have this to be able to do that. But God is saying this to you, just like how he told them. Let me read it real quick. This is Deuteronomy chapter nine, verse one through three. So God already warned him and told him about the giants. And he said, a great and and mighty and tall people, the children of Anakims, those who you already know about and of whom you heard saying, man, who can stand before the children of Anak? The promise that God gave to you, it may seem far-fetched. It may seem ridiculous. You may be like, oh God, now you know what I got. How am I going to be able to do that with what I have right now? But in order to get that, it seems like every time you're trying to move forward, you get knocked back 20 steps. You may be saying to yourself, dang, God, like, man, like, how can I do this with what I already have? Like, what the heck is going on? To sum it all up, I'm going to try to get straight to the point. In that promised land, we've heard that it was a land of milk and honey. They had grapes like the size of boulders and they needed two people to carry it back to Moses to show them everything that was in the promised land. But when they saw the giants that was already there in that place that God promised them, their heart was struck with fear. They doubted and said, no, I don't understand how God gonna give us that land where we can't fight them giants. They they too big. They mightier than we are. We can't do that. So God got upset. Not only because they doubted. Not only because they murmured and complained. But they didn't believe him. Now, one of the things that God told them, just like I believe he told you, when he gave them the promise, he always gave, he, he also gave them another promise of how he was going to deliver them to allow them to be able to get into that promised land. Yes, there were giants there, but he said to them, let me see if I can find it here. Oh, he said, therefore, this day, the Lord thy God is he which go out before you. As a consuming fire, he shall de- destroy them. He shall bring them down before your face. There shall, thou shalt drive them out and destroy them quickly, as the Lord had said unto thee. So after hearing that, it shouldn't be no reason for them to fear, right? If you go to their promised land, you see those giants there, they should automatically remember, oh yeah, it's cool. No matter how big they are, no matter how strong they seem, no matter how mighty the weapons that they have is like two, three times the size of us, God gave us a promise. He said he go drive them out for us. He said he go smash them down as dust. He said he go bring them down before our face. He said he go deliver them unto us. And we go have the victory. We go come into that land. But nah, it's because of what they saw. Don't let what you see come in between the promise that God gave from you and you receiving it. Just because for those who's trying to conceive, let's use them for example, and I'm going to use a few other examples. If you're trying to conceive and your cycle come, Don't let what you see hinder the promise that God has for you. Just because the doctors gave you a prognosis or whatever health scare you came across, 
that's something that you've seen. That's something that you heard. Remember, they heard about the giants and they heart feared. They saw the giants and they heart feared. And then they didn't want to go into the promised land because of what they saw and what they heard. Don't let what you see that's happening around you or in your life or what you hear that um, could be happening around your life cause you to forfeit your promise and throw in the towel. Just remember, if God gave you the promise, don't you think he go be able to fight for you? Don't you think he's going to make a way for you to enter into that promise? Yeah, it may take a little while, but it's not. it doesn't mean that it's not going to happen. It doesn't mean that that's it. It doesn't mean that's the end of the road. Keep pursuing. Keep going. Don't let fear and doubt cripple you. Because what's on the other side of the promise is that blessing. You're going to be able to get into it. But hey, it is what it is. Maybe God is trying to um, cultivate and build your faith so that when you do get into that promise season, nothing could be able to withstand you. He don't want you going to that promise of owning your own business, of becoming a doctor, lawyer, or conceiving, bringing forth children, or building a home, or 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 building your credit, or whatever it is that it is that you want to do, or God promised you. You're gonna face some giants. On your step there, on the road there, there's going to be some giants that you got to face. But don't let those giants destroy you. By faith, you destroy those giants. Remember God's promise. As he gave you that promise, as he gave you that vision, he said, this is what I'm going to do to help you get there. But on the way there, you're going to experience this. But remember what I told you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to guide you. I'm going to keep you. I'm going to withhold you. And I'm going to make sure that you get this promise. But don't go by what you see, because that's just going to throw you off course. So I'm telling you today. Don't go about what you see. If you want to read further into this, you can go to Numbers chapter 13, verse 17 through 33. It gives you more detail on everything. I want to read this to you real quick, then I'm going to let you go and enjoy your day. Remember, first he gave them a promise. Then he told them what they'll have to go through in order to get the promise. Then he gave them a solution of how he would help them and deliver them to be able to go into that promise. That's for you today. All right? So if you see it, believe it. When fear comes in front of you, when that giant stands before you, when it seems like, okay, because I'm going through this thing or I'm going through that thing, oh man, I just can't get it. Oh, it's driving me crazy. Yes, I hear you, Holy Spirit. If oppression comes, if depression comes, if somebody says something to you to try to talk you out, oh man, I, I tried that, man. You can ask my homies. They tried it too. They weren't able to do it, man. It's too hard. You go follow them and, and get their portion. Or you go be the example to show them how you can overcome and get it regardless of whatever whatever anybody say to you concerning that thing. Don't be the statistic with them. All right? Let them see your life. Let them see that with God all things are possible. Let them see that you are an overcomer. And they'll be like, dang, man, I'm proud of you, man. I, I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't think you could do it. I'm like, well, that's how it is in life sometimes. Yes, we have obstacles. We can either stand there in front of them and, and make them look like, cause us to look like an ant. We can go through them. We can overcome them. We can be on the other side. So, the final thing that I want to say to you all in that scripture, only two people was able to enter into the promised land. That was Joshua and Caleb. Because they were the only two that believed God's word that said how he was going to deliver those giants into their hands. They were the only two that believed that, man, we could take these giants on, man. Ain't nothing, man. We got this. We're going to get that promised land. If God said it, it's already done. It's already ours. They were the only two out of hundreds and thousands of the children of Israel. They didn't make it into the promised land because they doubted. Because they crumbled under what was in front of them. Because they saw those giants and got afraid. They saw that spotting or they saw those cramps or they saw that bleeding or they saw that no or they saw that disconnection notice or they saw when they went to that interview, they said, oh, no, nah, we actually just filled that position yesterday. They let what they saw in front of them keep them from going into the promised land. Other people went into the promised land, too. But guess what? There was infants. God said the only the only people that's going to go into the promised land, along with jo Joshua and Caleb, it's those who don't know what's right from wrong right now. Meaning the little babies. Because hey, they couldn't doubt or have faith. They were just infants. But it was those who knew right from wrong. Those who knew better, but still didn't believe God. They didn't make it into the promised land. I don't want that to be you. God has so much for you. It'll blow your mind. If God was to show you a picture of, or even a little glimpse or dream of what your life will be like in five years because you believe him, you couldn't wait to get there. Let's get there. I want to see you there. I want to rejoice with you. All right? Blessings to you.